All right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well today, for a bit of fun, I thought I'd do a slightly different video. You know the TV show Room 101, where people send things they wish didn't exist into oblivion? Well, I thought it'd be fun if I did one for all my pet hates of the automotive world. The concept originated in George Orwell's novel 1984. Anyway, that's not important. What is important is number one on my list, because it's quite controversial, given that it's what I do for a living. But I'd like to put most used car salesmen into Room 101. I should point out early on that when I've been buying a used car, I have had several decent experiences, but most haven't been great. They sell you the dream and then the reality of it just doesn't live up. The minute you have an issue with the car, they fob you off, and then in my case what happens is they fob me off, send me from pillar to post, and then about three weeks later somebody within that company realises that I've got a YouTube channel and might make life slightly difficult for them, then they're nice as pie, and it's not fair is it? Quite often they're not interested in the car at all, they don't know anything about it, they just want to sell you super guard, warranties, service plans, all that sort of stuff. None of which I'm interested in, by the way. I know what you're thinking, now technically I am a used car dealer, that is my business, but, well I'm not really, am I? I'm not, I'm not a traditional used car dealer or seller. I've mentioned this before, but I only got into this job because I'm passionate about cars and, well it was a bit of a stopgap and that was nine years ago. I just hate the hard sell, I hate everything about it. Nobody's gonna pressure anybody around here, Stan. You know something though, Stan? I really think you ought to buy this Buick. And I also have been insulted by quite a few of them over the years. You know, when I ask a question, I remember a few years ago, I went to go and look at a 645 BMW Coupe. I ended up buying one just like it. Um, but I went to go and look at this particular one, and I said, right, it's a 4.4 litre V8, what's it like on fuel? And I got this answer. Well, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. I didn't ask that. I didn't ask whether you thought I could afford it or not. I just want to figure. Is it 14 miles per gallon? Is it 22? Let me know. So I'm sick of those kind of snidey little comments. Anyway, that was the first one on my list. The second one on my list is smart motorways. And I think also I'll couple this with average speed zones. I detest them. Basically, smart motorways are anything but. If you're watching this from outside the UK and you don't know what one is, let me just give you a quick explanation. So it's a stretch of motorway that's controlled by cameras and then somebody in a control room somewhere watches the flow of traffic, if there's a breakdown or an accident or whatever, they slow the speed down so in theory the traffic doesn't back up. So on paper at least, they work, but in reality, they really don't. They also tend to get rid of the hard shoulder, so if you do have a breakdown, then the whole thing just comes to a halt. They really don't work at all. It's easy to pick up speeding fines, as I've done several times before, because you've got something like a tenth of a second to lower your speed once you go past the sign. If it suddenly drops from 70 to 40 in some cases, they're just ridiculous. I don't know who thought that that was a good idea. In addition to that, they take about 18 years to complete. That's not an actual figure, but it feels like 18 years. And they cost more than a mission to the moon. It's just a complete farce, really. And you know the most frustrating thing? Somebody obviously agrees with me because they've just been paused and frozen. So all those billions of pounds spent on them was just money down the drain. And also briefly, I mentioned average speed zones. Now, I hate those too because you join the motorway and then all of a sudden, for the next 20 miles, you're set to 50 miles an hour. So everybody... Everybody's sat there doing 50 miles an hour crawling. So it's really dangerous because you can't weave in and out of traffic. Everyone's just sat there doing 50 miles an hour. Now again, in principle, in theory, I understand the point of them. If you've got road workers there, then you don't want to be screeching past at 70 or 80 miles an hour. I get that. But most of the time, you don't see a soul. You don't see anyone there in a high-vis jacket. So they're going in the bin. Before we get on to the next one, I just want to say a quick thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. If you want to protect yourself while you're shopping online or doing online banking, then you really need to check out Surfshark. They're a VPN service provider. It protects you so that all your data and your details and your IP address are hidden, so cyber thieves can't view it. In addition to that handy feature, it blocks malware, phishing, ads, and other kinds of nastiness, which in turn can speed up your bandwidth and make your device stream things much more quickly. The last thing I want to do is get my card details stolen or my bank details hacked, and since I've been using Surfshark, touch wood, that just hasn't happened. Another good thing about Surfshark is you can change your location settings so you can watch your favourite content from online streaming services like Netflix. You know how sometimes you want to watch a show or a film and it says it isn't available? Well with Surfshark you can change your location settings so that it thinks you're in a different territory. Then all of a sudden it becomes available. You can download the app very easily from the App Store and you can use it on multiple devices. It's cheap and easy to use. We're all online a huge amount of time these days, so you just don't know how much information you're putting out there. So it's better to be protected rather than not. Especially if you frequently use insecure public Wi-Fi spots, such as at airports, train stations, and other places. If you're interested in checking out Surfshark and you want to get an even better deal, then use my promo code HYPECORTOS and you'll get three months extra, totally free. Or click the link below in the video description. Or visit surfshark.deals forward slash HYPECORTOS. I thank Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. On to number three then, insurance companies. 
I loathe car insurance companies. In fact, it isn't just car insurance companies, it's, it's all insurance companies. Now, luckily for me, I've got quite a good broker who I've been with for seven or eight years now. So I just stick with them. I'm loyal. Yes, my premium goes up every year, but I just, I don't bother shopping around. They're dead fair with me. When I get a new car, I just call them up and say, right, here's the reg, can you add that to my policy? Job done. But for most people, it doesn't work that way. Usually when I see mates do this, they're on hold for 45 minutes and then they get no common sense when somebody finally answers. Calm down, dear. It's a commercial. <laughs> or worse than that, they'll get a quote for a car that they're thinking about buying. Then when they do buy it a couple of weeks later, the quote's changed. Then they're sat in a car dealership waiting to pick up the new car and the quote's gone up two or 300 pounds. It's not fair. And every single year, premiums go up. They never come down, ever. And for the past few years, it's just completely got out of hand. So I think somebody needs to put car insurance companies into room 101. And I'd like that to be me. Number four on this bitter little list of mine is 3D reg plates. And also I'd like to put into room 101 private plates that are misspaced. I hate that. I've seen some shocking things with a screw hole in the wrong place or some electrical tape in the wrong place just to try and spell a word. Leave it alone. Now regarding 3D reg plates, I don't really know why I hate them so much. It's just as soon as I see one I think, that car hasn't been looked after. It's been thrashed, it hasn't been serviced, they just, they just scream of chav. I think that's why I hate them. And I know styling and appearance is subjective, but I don't know why anyone thinks they look cool. They do not look cool, so get them in the box, or the room, or whatever we've called it. They're just really crass and tasteless, and you often see them on some sort of heavily modified car, usually something like a, an older shaped Range Rover Sport that's either smothered in chrome or completely blacked out. And that happily brings me on to number five, because number five on my list is body kits. So yeah, body kits. Let me ask you a question actually. Have you ever seen a car with a body kit and thought, hmm, that looks good? Because I haven't, I definitely haven't. I just think they look appalling and atrocious. And it tells me immediately that the owner has zero taste. I'll let you in on a little fact about me. I've done well to keep this hidden for many years, but I may as well tell you. I'm a big Range Rover fan. So it really bothers me when I see crass body kits, particularly on Range Rover Sports. Usually on the full size, the owner knows what day it is and they leave them well alone. But particularly on the Sports, they're always modified. I see this every single day. You've got Overfinch, Hawk, Khan, Revere, Urban. I saw one the other day that was particularly bad. Um, ba Banzerai or something. It was the worst thing I've ever seen. Now quite often you'll see body kits on young boy racer cars and that, I don't, don't get me wrong, I don't like them, but you can sort of understand why they've done that because they're 17, 18, they're spending all their money from the paper round or wherever they work, McDonald's or whatever, on some horrendous body kit for the course of C or D. I kind of get that, I don't like it, but I know that it exists, so I just turn a blind eye to it. But don't do it on decent stuff, don't do it. So yeah, do me a favour, leave it out. Let's put body kits into room 101. Okay, next one then. While we're talking about tasteless modifications, I would like to put into room 101 anything that you buy in the center aisle from Aldi or Lidl that's for a car. Anything. I'm talking specifically about dash cams, those heated seat pads that you just plug into your 12 volt socket, those reversing sensors where you see the wire going into the boot because there's no power source for them. Leave it alone. Leave them in Aldi. I quite like Aldi and Lidl for food because it's quite good value, but steer clear of the center aisles. You don't need a drum set, you don't need a dash cam, you don't need a bongo. And I've seen no evidence that any of this works anyway because they're usually on older people's cars and those kind of cars are always littered in scrapes and dents. So all those cameras aren't helping you out. Now onto the next one and here's something that gets me really angry. Fake badges. I saw the other day I was in traffic and saw a 2007 Range Rover Sport 2.7 TDV6 badged as an SVR. They didn't even make an SVR in 07. The other day I saw a 116 BMW SE with tiny wheels, badged as an M. Unless it's a particularly rare model I didn't know they made. Oh, oh, and I suspect <sighs> criminal offence. What? Anyone who puts an M badge on a BMW that isn't an M BMW has to go to prison. I just don't know who these people are trying to impress. Leave it on eBay. The other thing is, I watched a uh, Doug DeMuro video about this a few months ago, and he made quite a good point. He said that fake badges are a bit like fake designer clothing. Anyone who knows about that knows that it's a fake, and anyone who doesn't know about that isn't bothered and doesn't care. So who are you doing it for? So I hope you agree with me on this. Let's put fake badges into the box. Right, we're at number eight already. We're flying through this list, and I feel better already. Number eight on the list is remaps. Now I hate vehicle remapping. It's where somebody takes a average-ish car 
to a mechanic that's based under some railway arches somewhere, pays them £400, usually in cash, and then they ruin their car. That's basically how it works. You'll often hear somebody say, oh yeah, my Focus ST, it's running at 420 brake horsepower. Is it? Because I don't think Ford intended that. Your engine and gearbox and clutch and all that sort of stuff will only take so much power. And these engineers at these big car manufacturers know exactly how much a car will take. So don't take it to some industrial estate on the outskirts of Slough and expect miracles. I just think you should leave your car completely standard. That's my opinion. And another thing, when somebody tries to trade in a car that's been remapped with me, hi, hey, would you be interested in my VW Golf? Uh, yeah, possibly, send me the reg. Well, it's running at 450 brake. Right, okay. I've had it remapped, I've had it chipped. No then, I don't want it. Thanks very much, because I automatically assume that that's had a hard life. I mean, it can't not have done. If all you're bothered about is maximum power, it just makes me think you've probably driven that car and thrashed it to within an inch of its life. So no thanks, take it to wee Bernie car, I don't want it. On to number nine. I hope my mechanic isn't watching this, because it is mechanics. Specifically though, mechanics who don't mechanic. Mechanic who just want to stick a new part on your car rather than fix what's there already. Now I see this all the time. There are no old school engineers anymore that take things to bits and then fix them. More often than not, they just want to throw that part in the bin and then order a brand new one from Eurocar Parts and bolt that on. Well, how about you take that one to bits and try and fix it? See what went wrong with it, replace a spring or a nut or whatever, and then get it working again. Not only will it save you money, but it's also better for the environment. So it'll put a smile on Greta Thunberg's face. I mean, probably not. She's quite bitter, isn't she? My dad's a really good one for this because he's like an old school engineer. He loves taking things to bits, seeing where it went wrong and then fixing it. But most people aren't. They just don't care. The other thing I don't like about mechanics, which is why I'd like to put them into room 101, is that thing they do where they suck air through their teeth when you try and tell them a fault with your car. You'll have all experienced this. You call your mechanic and say, right, I've got an issue with my car. It's just developed this little top end rattle. And this is the response you get. Oh, that's gonna cost you that. And I can't get you in for three weeks. Is it really worth fixing? Yes, it's worth fixing. It's Givenchy Green. A few years ago, when I wasn't my easygoing, happy-go-lucky self, I did a video about mechanics, so it's basically 25 minutes of me moaning about them. You might want to go back and watch it. The video itself is called, which I thought was quite funny, Matt and the Mechanics. It's a little play on words there for you. You're welcome. So, mechanics. See you later. Right, the last one on this little miserable, bitter list of mine is, you ready for this? The Nissan Duke. Specifically, all Nissan Dukes. I detest the Nissan Duke on a cellular level. I've done a video about this, you might want to go back and watch it, but it's just 10 minutes about me moaning about Jukes and their owners. In parts it's quite offensive, but it is true. <laughs> anyway, I detest the Nissan Juke, so that's number 10. Well, I think that's about it. I feel better now, I've got that off my chest, it's quite therapeutic. Let me know below in the comments if you agree with all my points, or if I've forgotten something. I probably have forgotten some, because there are lots of things which annoy me these days. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.